Good morning! <coughs> this is Magnus Helber here in Los Angeles with my daily dashboard update on March 19th, 2012. And uh, hopefully you all recovered from uh, St. Patrick's Day celebrations here a couple of days ago. And we had a little bit of rain here. I mean, they were talking about the biggest storm this year. And it might have been the biggest storm this year, but it still wasn't much, wasn't it? Didn't seem like a lot of rain, but it was an awful lot of wind and cold that went with it. Yeah, it's pretty cold. Right now it's 41 degrees here in Topanga Canyon. Uh, and uh, when I woke up this morning, got out of the car, there was actually frost or ice on the windshield. So it was a cold night here in Los Angeles and it's still pretty cold, but it is sunny and gorgeous as we drive to through Topanga Canyon. And the wind is gone. And the wind, the howling wind has stopped. So I'm talking to uh, my friend here, Scott Comedy. We're talking about the difference between income properties and uh, residential properties and how to evaluate them. So why don't you elaborate a little bit on that, Scott? Well, at the end of the day, um, the value of a, of a rental of an income property is tied to how much you can rent it for. Um, so, you know, for instance, if you have, uh, let's just say you have an apartment building and the, um, the owner puts it up for sale for uh, $2 million and they post, they have to post what the rents are on those units when they put it up for sale. And if you combine all the rents and, you know, let's say that the rents are enough to support uh, a payment of a million dollar mortgage, there's really, there's no incentive for a buyer to step up and buy that property because A, there's no cash flow. I mean, unless they pay cash, then there's a cash flow. But, um, you know, the, the maintenance, the upkeep, the insurance, etc. none of that stuff is covered. And they know that apartment buildings, are, they're not going to appreciate in value as fast as other properties because it's tied to the, the, the amount that they can rent it for. And unfortunately, here in California, uh, rentals uh, on income units, not single family homes, but income units, like apartments, two units or more, uh, are governed by rent control laws here in LA. So you can only rent the property out within certain parameters, such as a maximum percentage that you're allowed to run it for a year, uh, the maximum allowable rental on that unit. Uh, if you have a tenant that moves out on their own, uh, it frees up a lot of things. But if you ask them to move, if you evict them, and then you ever want to rent it again, you have to offer it back to them for the same price they were paying. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. So. Uh, income units, the value is tied to how much they rent for and how much their expenses are. There you go. That's the advice of the day. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically just based on how much income you can get. And, and uh, that's it. It's uh, that simple. And I think that's our daily dashboard update today on March 19, 2012. On this gorgeous, sunny, but cold Los Angeles. And it's a new week. It's Monday. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Make lots of money and be happy. This is Magnus Dathelberg at thepartnerstrust.com, signing off. And Scott.comedy with thepartnerstrust.com, at thepartnerstrust.com, signing off as well from Los Angeles Daily Dashboard Update. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Goodbye. And I believe that today is the last full day of winter and tomorrow ushers in spring so uh for what that's worth folks enjoy your last day of winter that's right goodbye everybody bye